Hey there! In this video, we'll talk about the application services from the ABP framework part 1. When we have a certain logic in our application, application services implement that logic. When taking a look at the domain driven design and compare between the domain logic and the application logic, you could clearly understand how the application services work. Think about it this way. Domain driven design is for large scale applications, not just any simple crude applications. We need to be able to tell the difference between the core domain logic that gets repeated in between all of the applications and has consistent data out of all of them and the application logic that could have the same idea but could be implemented differently depending on the application. Say for example we have the logic of a bank application. A very large bank application that is divided in between three main applications the admin, which is the single page application on Angular, the website running on MVC, and the mobile application. The customer information and customer username and password and all of these should be consistent in all of these three applications, right? And so they should be in the core domain logic. There is, however, some logic that could be different when we want to implement it, and that depends on what project we're working on. Say for example the Western Union service. If you wanted to send or receive money using the mobile application, you tap your finger on the button of Western Union on the mobile application and it tells you that hey, I'm going to transfer you to the MVC UI application for this service. The Western Union app service for the mobile application redirects you to the web application. And once you tap on the Western Union button on the web application, you'll see that the API connects. The Western Union app service on the mobile application is different than the Western Union app service of the MVC UI web application. And this is how precise the domain driven design is. You can already tell how many scenarios we've got to manipulate our resources like that. There is so much logic that we can implement in a way in an application and implement differently in another application. Depends on the DDOs, the use cases, the scenarios, you name it. So how does the ABP framework handle the application services? The application service interfaces and the DDOs are defined in the application contracts layer. And the implementation of these interfaces will be in the application layer. And it's going to contain the application logic where we'll also be extending the application service base class and we're also going to be injecting the domain services and the repositories to perform the application logic. And so the application contracts layer references to the domain shared layer, whereas the application layer references to the domain layer. We always need to isolate the domain layer as much as possible. As for the dependency injection, ABP uses named conventions to register the dependencies automatically and their lifetime is transient. For example, let's say that we've got an interface of an app service that's called iBook App Service. If the app service class that's going to implement the interface is called Book App Service, then it's a named convention that's going to be automatically registered with a transient lifetime. If it were, for example, Book Service, then this needs manual registration with the expo service attribute or the manual registration from the module class. Now it's time for some general definitions and best practices. First off, it's better to create an application service for each aggregate root. We've got the customer aggregate root, we're going to create the customer app service. And same goes with the customer group app service. App services send and return DDOs and not entities. The domain layer deals with entities and aggregate roots and value objects, whereas the application layer deals with DDOs and it's also got the object mapping and the object configuration. So do not return an entity from an application service method. Always use a DDO. Try to reuse the common output DDOs, but separate the input DDOs and do not inject other application services to an application service. Do not, for example, inject the customer application service to the customer group application service. That is a big no-no. Use the domain services instead. Authorization is also used in the application services and not in the domain layer. I mean, if we think about it, 
One of these three is called the administration application. And so of course the authorization is implemented differently to each one of these applications and not in a consistent way in the domain layer. They should also be created according to the presentation layer. For example, if the presentation layer has got three buttons, then we're probably going to have three application service methods. Remember to make the application service methods asynchronous and add the async suffix to the end of them. And there are some base classes and interfaces that we can implement and they will make our lives way easier. And they are, of course, the application service, the read-only app service, the abstract key read only app service, the abstract key crude app service, and the crude app service. The crude app service, as you might have guessed, generates crude methods for you. All you have to do is just pass in your class. It is assuming that you're using a primary key, and that's why we've got the abstract key crude app service, if you're using a composite key. In the application service base class, got a lot of stuff that can save you a lot of sweat, pain, and tiers, such as the object mapper, the current user, the current tenant, the GUI generator that we've used before, and the unit of work manager. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the coding part in the next video.